Ethiopian Airlines says it has not decided yet whether to cancel an order for more of the planes. Boeing's CEO has acknowledged the anti-stall software on the jets played a role in both the Ethiopian Airlines and Lion Air crashes. Boeing says it is temporarily cutting production of the 737 MAX. It will go from producing 52 planes a month to 42 starting in the middle of this month. But the MCAS system, as it's called, is not the only cause of concern on the 737 MAX. The Washington Post reports that regulators are ordering Boeing to fix a second software problem. Tom Foreman has more details. A source inside of Boeing tells CNN, Pauline, that this is a relatively minor fix at this point. It deals with a major part of the aircraft here. If you look on the backs of the wings there, the little red areas, the flaps is what we're talking about in this case. But you could argue that there is nothing minor at Boeing right now because there is so much scrutiny on this plane line, the Max Air line. And the real issue, the one that we've been waiting on a fix for, deals with the MCAS system. The MCAS system relies on little sensors up front here which tell you the angle of the plane. Basically, if the plane starts angling up too high and one of these sensors registers that, then this computer kicks it and automatically brings it back to level. But the preliminary report from Ethiopia suggests that one of these was getting a false reading and thought the plane was angling up when it wasn't, and the MCAS system started pushing the nose toward the ground. This is exactly what they think happened in the Indonesian crash as well. Then as the crew fought the plane, it went up and down in the sky, ultimately in the Ethiopian preliminary report, going into the ground at a 40-degree angle at almost 600 miles an hour. The bottom line is, until Boeing gets all these problems completely under control in this air, uh, in this airframe, in this style of airplane, there is very little hope that they can get back the confidence of the air industry, pilots, and the flying public. And if they cannot get that confidence back, these planes will likely stay grounded for a very long time. Pauline? All right, Tom Foreman, thank you very much. The family of an American woman killed in the Ethiopian Airlines crash is now suing Boeing and the maker of the sensor at the center of the investigation. Samia Stumo was among the 157 people killed in last month's crash. A lawsuit filed by her family Thursday claims Boeing haphazardly rushed its 737 MAX jetliners to the market. Stumo was also the grandniece of consumer advocate and former presidential candidate Ralph Nader. I spoke with him just a short time ago and began by asking about Samia. She was working in global health and master's in uh, public health from the University of Co Copenhagen in Denmark. She'd done field work in Africa. She had leadership and compassion and intellectual rigor just written all over her. Uh, everybody knew it. People came from all over the world to uh, pay their respects at the small mm -hmm. farm where she grew up. And uh, we'll never know how many lives she would have saved. She knew how to cut through bureaucracy. She had published articles at she's only 24. And she knew that public health in Africa had to start at the community level. Mm, I'm so sorry, Mr. Nader. Um, I, I know that her parents have filed suit against um, Ethiopian Airlines, Boeing, and the FAA. Are you part of this lawsuit? And if not, what do you want these entities to do next? No, I'm not part of the lawsuit. This is a civil justice suit under the American law of torts. It looks like CEO Mullenberg has conceded that uh, the software misfiring, et cetera, caused the two crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia. Uh, I think he wants to get rid of the civil lawsuit with some sort of settlement because civil lawsuits in our country can't be pulled back by political pressure. But the, all the other investigations, Congress, Department of Justice, FBI criminal probes, Department of Transportation, they can all be pulled back politically. That's why I think the key to all this to make sure this plane, this MAX plane, never flies again, uh, our airline passengers. They don't want 5,000 planes uh, with a, a potential time bomb software that deals with fixes, glitches, and creates problems in various configurations that cannot be predicted. And, and that's why we, wanna, we want people to pay attention to flyers, uh, rights.org. That's the Consumer Airline Passenger Organization 
run by Paul Hudson, whose daughter was killed above Scotland in the Pan Am uh, explosion 30 years ago. And he's been uh, pushing for airline safety on the FAA advisory committee ever since. So the airline passengers have to take this into their own hands. They have got to refuse to fly that plane if it ever flies again. The motto is X, the max. That plane is fatally defective. All these reports by aerospace engineers and other experts point to one conclusion. That plane was built with heavy engines, larger engines vectored forward and up that upset the center of gravity and the aerodynamics of the plane, leading to all the software stuff. The Boeing 737... 700 and 800 they don't need all this software stuff. so are you are you saying that if boeing fixes the software glitches that are that may be involved with the mcas system that's not good enough no because the basic industrial defect of the plane itself remains and increases the risk of being prone to stalling apart from the pilots no aircraft should be built and certified that is prone to stalling it's got to be prone proof. And that's why it's important to recognize that what Boeing is trying to do, and it can wreck their business if it persists and not get rid of this plane and selling modern 737-800s at a discount, what, what, what they did, the fatal decision that Boeing managers did, repressing their own engineers' best judgment, was they pressed forward on an aging design beyond its limits. The 737 was designed in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So if Boeing took steps to avoid pilot retraining, which is one thing that's being investigated, should someone go to jail? Now, there's criminal negligence here, and obviously if there's suppression of internal uh, contrary documents, memos by conscientious Boeing engineers, that's, that's, that's criminal behavior. And that's why the FBI and the Justice Department, and there's an operating grand jury operating in Virginia on this, uh, are probing. Uh, and I think there needs to be a change of management at the top. They've just made disastrous decisions, putting the company at risk, never mind all the uh, 346 innocent uh, people who died in Indonesia and Ethiopia. But the, the answer is not the fix or the glitch or the, all that. They can't predict all these configurations. They can't put the burdens on the pilots all over the world with 5,000 planes. They have got to ground that plane permanently and go to other planes and not make a, a worse problem disastrous. What role did the FAA play here in your view, and what possible missteps did they take? The FAA cut budgets cut by Congress and various presidents, and they played a rubber stamp role. We had a book uh, that, I, that we put out called Collision Course in 1994 that predicted that there was going to be disaster because the FAA has turned into a delegator of self-regulation to Boeing, not a regulator. And you can see in their behavior after these two disasters, they're like a dinner machine of Boeing. This plane is safe. We have not found any reason to decertify. So the, the lawsuit against Boeing that was filed yesterday in Chicago will also file a federal tort, tort law claim against the FAA itself for criminal negligence. That was consumer advocate Ralph Nader speaking with me a little bit earlier.